Okay, um, let's go on to the, the next and final clip. And this one, like what Gary was talking about with the, the music for the entire galactic you know, journey, and then to end the entire film, uh, this I thought was gonna be the most challenging for uh, both for Sarah and also very challenging for Gary. So at the end of this, uh, of our discussion about it, we'll bring Gary in to, to comment on this also. And this is where uh, we had this whole animated theme, uh, for those of you who remember it, where uh, Sarah and I worked together for months on how can we <coughs> convey the seductiveness of the global bazaar, the globalist bazaar, and just draw people in <coughs> to this, uh, this kind of mall of, the, of the, the cabal, and then have them think they're getting a, a great offering, and then pretty soon things get more contracted, and then you end up going down a funnel, and then it gets dark, it gets crowded, uh, and then ultimately these funnels end up leading to the same place. And then the, at the same time, we decided the flip side of that is we needed, as we were exposing people to that experience of contraction and darkness, we also needed to provide always a door because we're trying to help people think critically. You can and you need to look at the dark stuff, but it doesn't need to get you down. In fact, it informs your solutions. It informs your ability to go to that exit door and then in the exit door, do exactly the opposite of what the controllers are trying to do to, uh, to suppress everybody's life. So this was two clips that are back to back. And I, I, I said to Sarah that I'd like us to look at them together. So people see the contrast uh, and then reflect back on both of them at the same time. So, so for this audience, look at the visuals, pay attention to the choices that were made there. And at the same time, uh, now and then tune into the music and see Gary's choices of how do we go down and how do we get out? Okay, Leandra, go ahead and play that clip. The non-aggression principle does not count on good behavior from everyone, quite the contrary. Individual accountability enforced by rules curtails bad behavior unlike what we have now that essentially rewards corruption and promotes those who best serve the controlling agenda. All of these deceptive and coercive funnels lead to the inevitable suffering and death that socialism, communism, and fascism inflict. Government expands its power at the expense of individuals because protecting itself is its primary job. The job of enlightened rules is to protect people and the planet. The transition toward a condition of true freedom and ultimately a rules but no rulers, stateless society is happening naturally and as fast as it is allowed. Okay, so what comes up for you in looking back on that, Sarah? Well, I think about how um, the backstory of going to the globalist bazaar and how it looks safe, right? You feel like this sense, it's not dark and dreary, you've got colors still, it's kind of washed out. And then you've got all these signs telling you how you're gonna be protected and here we go. And then it gets the cattle corral and it gets tighter and tighter. But in every section, there's the exit door. And we get to pick if we want to open that door, despite all the scary warnings about what's going to happen to you when you step through it. And I think that's beautiful because I've seen that realistically in my life, opening the exit door and how mm. I've never regretted it. So it was beautiful to be able to make that. And then um, I remember when we were working on that, and you go into the pit, we didn't know what we wanted the people to look like in the pit because they're very different than the other people. And the whole time it was very important to us to make real people because these are all real people that are good people that are trying to do what's best for them and their families. 
um, following rules. And so we didn't want to make these people look anything other than that. So we waited a long time before we decided what the people in the pit look like. Yep. And that was what I had sketched up. I really just wanted the contrast with the red of the flags because I thought that was very significant and poignant. Mm. Um, and then of course the exit door, um, Kimberly wanted a cat and a dog. I just wanted to mention that I put my dearly beloved cat and dog in that and then also some of my beloved nice friends are in there so if you think you recognize somebody you might <laughs> so <laughs> I wanted to share that because it's kind of like a fun are you in there that. Sarah I am oh <laughs> yeah. great uh, I, I to this date I don't know which one is you so I'll have to go back <laughs> separately and look at that yep and um, one of so the things that that I th thought you did amazingly well was uh Again, this challenge of bringing so many things into a very short period of time and a very small frame is that you had the free energy antenna, the Zenic Tower uh, in the back, and you had the unified field coming out of it. And then you had a, uh, a little flying saucer going across with, with, with a banner. There's so many things that happen subliminally and just end up having the effect without people necessarily noticing or understanding uh, a lot of the details. Right, yeah. Um, and I had taken the original of the Thrive Art that's behind you to create that scene. Mm. I thought that that seemed like the exit door scene. Yeah. So I, I added like a 50,000 pixel zoom through it, put water at the beginning and added all the fields and the flowers and the people. And, mm. and it ties it all together like really beautifully. People. Yeah. Well, let's, um, in the interest of time, let's bring Gary on. And Gary, do you have some reflections on your music creation process for the pit and for the exit door to Utopia? Well, remember, I, I got a PhD in writing music for evil <clears throat> for 15 minutes, 15 years of Unsolved Mysteries. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I've written more, more scary music than anyone you've ever known. I mean, literally, that's why I got the seven ASCAP Film and TV Awards. It was for the most music, not the best. Because <laughs> 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 there was so much reality show music. But, you know, they're, 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 so in many ways, it was easy to score the pure evil. And it's easy to score the, you know, the Thrive theme for the, the, out, the, the happy reality in the future and all that. And, um, but I do want to make one little comment that for those of you who know the film, that the decision to create a kind of a twisted, bizarre kind of carousel music for them all, you know, that, that the ultimate um, criticism is parody, right? When you can create a sense of, of, of kind of twisted humor around what is so apparent as shopping malls, right? It was really fun to come up with something for that. I know that's not the clip that you had in mind, but we referenced it when we talked about it. So, um, but the, yeah, I'm glad you yeah. said that because it's the same thing that some of those comics that we just watched. Yes, exactly. It's, it's, the, it's the art of taking some essential truth and then making it look ridiculous so that people notice how deeply ridiculous and often cruel it actually is. And exactly. that's the same thing with our 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 choice of the literally carousel music for when you're going into the globalist bazaar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, it's interesting because just from the standpoint of a film composer, and I'm sure this plays for everybody, is what is the, what is the emotional experience of either Sarah's work or the music work that is the unlocking alchemical tool that creates the experience of the whole green greater than the sum of the parts right, that right. conveys all the agendas that you want to convey emotionally that is again coming from silence and coming up with the one of the million choices you could make is yeah. one of the great fascinations that i have as the film scoring art form so yeah. um, so it's always a great interesting journey to find it or to let it be revealed you know 